All right, let's go. Call me what you wanna, I'll be what you wanna. I've been here a thousand times. Hey, hey, falling for another. I don't even bother, I could do it all my life. So tell me if you wanna, cause I got this feeling. I wanna hear What's you up, everybody? It's so great to see you again. We are always looking forward to Thursday every week because this day is so special for us. We get to spend an hour with you to share information and to network and to get tips and tricks all about the lapidary art. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lizelle and I'm the customer service and sales manager here at Highland Park Lapidary. I wanted to officially welcome you to our live interactive webinar. We appreciate you for always showing up on this call. We wanted to welcome our customers and followers as well that are streaming with us live, both on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Thank you for always tuning in with us. And we wanted to acknowledge as well our guests from the William Holland School of the Lapidary Art. I see Christine, the executive director and Bill Boggs, one of the instructor and our Intarsha expert, and the rest of the students as well there and uh, the instructor. Welcome, guys. And if you're brand new to this call, um, if it's your first or second time, we wanted to acknowledge you. So um, on the chat box on the Zoom, please put me on the chat. We wanted to give you some love and our warmest welcome. Hi, Wendy. I see you. I spoke with you on the phone. Welcome. Hi, Carrie. Hello, Steve. Hi, Carla. Hello, Richard. Hi. Matthew's new. Matthew, welcome. And hey, Hello. default. Whoever default is, good to see you. <laughs> yes, please put your name, your first name. Um, so we can acknowledge you. Hi, Janet from Central California. Welcome. Hello, Joel. I think this is the first time I see you. Welcome. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And we wanted to thank as well our OGs that are always tuning with us, supporting us and collaborating with us. We really, really appreciate you all. It just feels good when, you know, we get to have that direct access and connection to all of you. I know we spoke to some of the OGs on this call. We asked some tips and information so we can share to new customers as we spoke on them on the phone. So the team really appreciate the extra mile you are given to us. And in return, we wanted to add value to all of you in form of information, acknowledgement, and the most especially direct access and information from Jan and Sherman Roland. So we wanted to make sure that you guys take full advantage of that. All right, so last week's session was so interesting and fun and full of knowledge. Tonight, we are in for another treat. This is the exciting part we are waiting for. It's part two of the Electro Etching with Fabrication Essential. And we're so honored to have him again for the second time to discuss the depth process on this series. Everybody, let's give our hand to our guest speaker, no other than Micah Kirby of the William Holland School of the Lapidary Art. Let's give him some love on the chat. Thank you so much, Micah. Thank and you. For Thank your, you for having me. Hello, everyone. And for your questions later, we can raise your hand by going to our reaction icon at the bottom part of your Zoom and click raise hand. Or you can also post your questions via chat. Thank you, Sherman, for demonstrating that. Okay, let's join Micah together with our CEO, John Rowland, and our general manager, Sherman Rowland, to kick off our 29th Helen Park live interactive webinar with our intro video.
I'm thrilled to be back here. And Micah, um, you know, you and I talked originally when we were setting this thing up. And so super stoked to be on here with the two of you guys. I'm not quite as peppy because I'm still on European time. So I'm like midnight <laughs> right now. So if all of you see that I look a little tired now, it's because I'm still on like European time. Um, so, uh, you know, we you've got so many videos that you provided. And I know last week was a lot of questions that all of you were asking. Um, and so what we're going to do, because there's so much content, is we're going to move into a lot of the videos. And as we're going through videos, you have questions, put them in the chat. The team will capture that. That'll show up in a spreadsheet right in front of me in real time. And so then when we break, we promise you we'll cover your questions. But we want to roll fairly quickly because we got a lot, a lot to cover here tonight. And we want to really get to the, the overall picture. And we will get your questions handled. So just put them in the chat as we're rolling through and we'll do things. John, anything you want to say to kick things off? No, uh, I'm I'm just enjoying this process. I, uh, like I was thinking about how many people are wanting to create unique pieces that make their pieces stand out. So uh, particularly the people who are, uh, you know, doing this commercially, they want a unique look and that what Mike is teaching is, is a way to do that that doesn't require that you spend a lot of money, but yeah. you learn a new technique that is really versatile. And so I'm, I'm excited that we're being able to show this. And, and, uh, and I think Mike is uh, really uh, brilliant with how he utilizes this. And so it's kind of fun because I, I haven't done etching before, but uh, I definitely understand the technology behind it. Sure. Yeah. Technology actually is pretty, pretty rudimentary. Like making really. circuit boards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of, um, I'll try to keep my answers concise too. I'll say that yeah. too, to help us, <laughs> help us right. do that. So, yeah. Well, I'll pull you in and I'm like, okay, let's, let's go <laughs> back to the question. So we go. <laughs> Um, sure. so, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to see all of you here because I can see all your faces and I definitely turn on your camera if you can. It's like great because I can, we make contact on that. And Christine, it's great to see you. Uh, we'll pull you up a little later. Christine, with any of you who have not attended the William Holland School of Lapidary Arts, you got to go there. It is one of the best values in lapidary education. And you're there in the classroom right now, right, Micah? Correct. I am. I got my, my stuff all behind me. Got yeah. my, my chemicals and everything all sitting over here. My rectifiers. Yeah. Yep. No, super, super cool. I mean, you guys, have, you know, for you all, I've seen, you know, Bill Boggs. We've got some other things coming as well. But really, this is, this is, got to be probably one of the very best values uh, in, in lapidary. I know William's on here too. William, uh, like, well, there are lots of people because we also had some folks that, um, oh, what's his name in Pennsylvania? I'm blanking his name. He does all the amazing, fascinating. And I'm like, you're on their call because I saw his name, but I'm blanking because I'm tired. Um, but <laughs> let's jump into the video, Joe. Uh, let's roll that first video. And, and then we'll just kind of keep rolling through there. I'll tell you when we want to stop. Teflon sheet comes into play here. Um, it's great because the contact paper won't really, it, it will stick to this, but it won't stick to your, uh, your, your surface, which then if you were to try to do this on just a table, you're going to have a pain of trying to get this up and you'll see why. So um, I'm going to lay this down. I try to just get this, um, area where can you see here and then a little bit I just try to get that centered all right um, now I haven't I haven't pushed this down yet it's just kind of loosely laid down here but um, this is the tab here um, that is what I want to make good contact with my um, with my piece so I'm just gonna Take my gift card, old gift card, and we're just gonna, um, you just wanna make sure to keep those air bubbles out. So that's all I'm really doing here. And go down. And... 
So, you know, I've got good contact here. I can tell that it's nice and adhered. Um, and so from this part here, you know, if you were to try to take this and just put it into your solution, your, uh, your back piece here is exposed, your piece of foil here. Um, if you were to just put that in, your foil would etch away. Um, you'd lose contact and the etching process would just stop. So we need to protect this little piece. So I've got a second piece of contact paper, pretty much the exact same size. Um, that then I will put on the back here. Again, I want to avoid air bubbles. Throw those away in a second. Um, now, again, this doesn't have to be right exact either. Um, I just need to make sure I keep my aluminum foil portion here covered. And that's basically what this piece is doing, is just making sure to uh, protect our little foil piece. And so I'm just going to set that there. Yeah, get it started. I'm going to hold it up because I want to make sure I try to keep my air bubbles out. And so I'm going to take my card. My, there we go. And you know, so I'm just kind of holding it up with my, you know, with my finger here. Um, you know, it's, it is kind of touching here a little bit, but you know, it hasn't, I haven't fully pressed it down. So I can still, if there's like any air bubbles, you might be able to hear them maybe if I, Now, if I were to have like an air bubble like here or something, or some random air bubble here, it's not a huge issue. Um, the only time that there would be an issue is if you had like a little crease coming from your edge into the middle here. That would be the only time that that would, that that, that could be an issue because that could create a little path for your solution to get into. Um, if you don't have that, then it's, it's not anything to, to really worry about if you do get a little air, random air bubble in here somewhere. All right, so, all right, so basically got the package there. Um, now we need to get it off the Teflon. Now, the nice thing about this, I like to flip it over and you, know, you can kind of give it a little, little push here. Just to make sure you get a nice, good adhesion onto that backside because we don't want the backside to get etched. And this is the beautiful thing about this stuff. It keeps it from being a pain if like, if you were to ever, like I said, if you try to do this on your surface, it would be a pain to get this off. Um, so basically this is where we're at with the packaging. Again, I hesitate from using this as a handle this is a little wide, um, you know, it might fit into my container, which uh, you can see here. It might fit in there. Um, I'm going to cut it first. Um, but I'm just going to trim up these edges here just to make it fit in a little, a little easier. So there is waste in this process. And again, this part doesn't have to be pretty either. Um, now I do like to keep a, a you know a, you know at least an inch of material around um, that's not a uh, it's not a huge deal if it's not uh, the only thing that can happen um, uh, is you know you don't you really want to keep my solution from like seeping in uh, any areas and so if I have uh, a little bit around the outside it, it seems to help keep that from happening. I do see, actually I do see maybe a couple of air bubbles here. Yep, if you can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I do have a couple of air bubbles. I'm not gonna worry about them because they, they won't, they're not gonna cause any problem for me. So I'm just gonna, I'll just leave them there. I'm not even gonna mess with them. I'm gonna cut a little bit off the end. 
And this is basically the, uh, I will say for myself, sometimes this is the hardest process. This is the hardest part of this process. Um, because sometimes people get it reversed or they, they, they want to not put it on the sticky side or something. But um, So from here, um, we are now ready to etch. So again, I explained that the Kubrick nitrate available at Amazon. Um, if you email me, I could always let you know how to do the mixing of it. And then I have these copper plates. This copper plate, a large one here for this particular process, but you can have small ones also. Um, I just made these myself, 24 gauge copper. Um, with the 24 gauge copper, then I cut off of like a strip here. Like that. Um, and then I just used wire, um, copper wire, and created my little rivets here to create my tab here to you know, hold the things up. Um, again, this does not have to be pretty. Um, we just need a, you know, and you really, you could use just about any piece of copper you wanted. I mean, you wouldn't even necessarily have to make a tab like this. You could take just your sheet, um, a long enough sheet, fold it over, and you just have a, a full sheet there, just as long as you have something to clip to. Um, you can use, just use any sheet you want. So, to give you some terminology, this would be my cathode. This is your negative. All right, so this is what your black is going to attach to. Um, this is a rectifier. Um, the nice thing about the rectifier is you can adjust your uh, amperage. Um, the another way here is just a a uh, an AC DC. Um, what they call these, um, not a transformer, but a, uh, converter, basically. It's like in your, your old, uh, you know, battery charger type of thing. Um, you can get these on Amazon and it's got a little lead connector here that you can just get little leads, connect that. Um, and it just creates, uh, you know, takes your AC, DC current to, um, or yeah, an AC current and changes it to direct current. Um, these maybe maybe five bucks. Uh, you can also use D cell batteries. Um, the only thing about these um, is the amperage that it uses, because the amperage is what's important. And I'll kind of go into that when you can see that you can see the numbers on the uh, rectifier. Um, the uh, you just you can't control the amount. It's got the amperage that it has, and those are all. It says on them, this is a, this one is amps, is one amp, six volts, one amp, right? And you won't need any more than one amp. Um, the idea here, um, the more amps that you have, the faster the etch. Now, what happens when you have more amperage, you can get a rougher etch. So good rule of thumb here is low and slow. It's kind of like with your barbecue. Um, so when I set this up here, um, when I initially get my rectifier, if you intend on purchasing one of these, um, plug it in, hook it up, turn it on. Um, I like to use less than one amp. All right, so how do I set that up? Um, the top here is voltage, which I never really pay attention to because the voltage isn't really important in this process. Um, your bottom here is the amperage. Um, that is what's important. So the way I set that up, I would take my two ends and just touch them together. So we can see we got some numbers here. All right, um, I can turn the knob up, 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 up. And that would be, you know, 1.01 amp. Um, I, don't need, I don't need that much amperage. Um, 
I mean, I could do it that way, but it, it, you know, it, like I said, low and slow is the way to go. So I'm going to back it down and it's real easy here. Um, just kind of tap it back. Is that, is that a seven? Okay. From here, from here, it looks like a one. Um, and I'm just going to go 0 0.8, 0 0.8 amps. All right. It's plenty, plenty there. Yeah. I mean, you could go, you could go 0 0.9. Um, um, really, it doesn't really matter. I think at that point, as long as it's under one amp, I think you're going to get a nice smoother etch. So I've got my amperage set just by doing that. So I know here, that's what my amperage should be at. Um, so now I'm ready to hook up. So I'll take the negative, the negative, the black goes to the copper, the copper plate, um, was also called the, uh, cathode. Then the piece itself, the piece that I'm etching is my positive, the red, and I'm going to put that in the solution and I'm going to put it all the way down just so it covers the top. I just want my whole piece submerged. All right. Fold that over. And I'm going to connect the positive. Um, doesn't matter which one you connect first, honestly. Um, you can, if you wanted to, it doesn't matter. You could connect your positive first, then your, you know, then your um, black. Um, doesn't really matter. So that's connected. You heard that little click. It's a good sign. It lets me know. It should be at the eight amps. We are now etching. What I like to do here um, is set a timer. Now, I've already done um, yeah. doing this enough. Uh, if I'm doing something small, I might set an eight minute timer, just a good roundabout time. Um, for this particular piece, the more surface area you're trying to etch, the longer it takes to etch. The smaller the surface area, the less time it takes. So um, I don't ever try to, you know, there are calculations you could do to figure out your surface area and da 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 da. I don't even mess with that. Um, for this, um, I'll set a timer for 20 minutes, come back and check it. And just from my experience, I know a piece like this, it's probably gonna take about 30. 30, maybe 40 minutes, depending. Um, so, but I'll set my timer and I'll come back and check it. From there, once that, that goes, um, I will end up with what looks like this. Um, after I've let it go for my 20, 30 minutes, dental tool. Um, I'll just take a dental tool and you can get it. Um, Harbor Freight have them, or if you, you know, um, there might be other places you can get dental tools from, but Harbor Freight's good, good and cheap. You don't need anything expensive for this. I just use these to kind of test my depth. So I'll kind of go in with the, the dental tool and I can feel, and you can see I've got a little, I've got, uh, uh where it kind of grabs, you know, so I can feel that there is, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what the millimeter, I mean, this would be less than a millimeter in depth, but, um, but I can tell that it's, it's a nice deep etch. Um, and so that's how I would test my, my depth here would be with that. Um, real quick on the solution itself. Um, I said that for this particular piece, it's 30, exactly 38 minutes is what I did for this piece. Um, you have the solution here, the solution, um, will, if you can see, this one's kind of cloudy because um, I've already etched this piece. Um, you can do multiple etchings. The solution will get saturated um, and you'll need to filter it. So um, the easiest way to do that is take a coffee filter and a funnel. I would 
would just pour my solution through the coffee filter into my other container and let that filter. That is the easiest way to clean the solution. And that'll work for a couple of times. Um, after you've done maybe two, three etchings, um, you would need to get a vacuum pump, but we're not gonna go all into that process. Um, if anybody's interested in that, we can either take the class or you can email me um, um, if you have any questions on, on that part of the process. Um, the nice thing about the cupric nitrate, as long as it is filtered and cleaned after, you know, after your, you know, couple of uses, um, if you know you're not going to be using it, filter it, put it into a container. I like to use old um, windshield wiper, nice thick plastic one. I mean, that's a good travel stuff. So this way I know it's better than just a gallon jug of uh, like your milk jug. Um, that's what I would use to, um, to store my solution. But I would filter my solution, put it in here, and it'll be good for, it, it'll be good forever, as long as you just keep cleaning the solution. Um, and then from that, you'll have your silver gunk that is produced um, in your coffee filter. Keep that coffee filter, you can reclaim that silver. Um, you know, you can, I just kind of collect a whole, got a whole bag of it, uh, filters with the silver in it. Um, when I get enough, I'll probably just have it sent out and have it refined for me. You can do it yourself um, if you want to take the time to do that. I'll probably just have mine sent out. Um, and then you can reuse that silver. So that's the nice thing about this. You can reclaim that silver. Um, and you can, you know, thing I love about it is get a nice unique piece. So we're back. Um, so we've got it etched. I need to clean this off. Um, acetone won't take off this enamel paint pen. Only thing that's gonna work is mineral spirits. Um, it doesn't have to be this particular brand, you just need mineral spirits to do it. So, um, take off. Just get rid of all the, what ends up that uh, technical term for what the pin is, is a resist. So we're going to take off our resist. So there's what we've got so far. Um, I'll go ahead and take this off. So, and also, um, I'll clean this off. I'm just gonna use a little bit of Dawn. I actually will probably use my uh, brass brush. You don't have to use a brass brush, um, but I think it will show you better of what you uh, end up with. Clean it off. A little brass brush here. Dry it off a little bit. And so this is what we've ended up with. So again, nice, you know, real simple, real simple pattern. Um, I think it creates a really cool effect. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't take much uh, drawing skills to, uh, to be able to do that. So from here, what I would do um, to create my cuff, I would, you know, have need to clean up my need to clean up my edges, take off my corners, um, and then form that. This is what you end up with. Um, so after I clean up my edges and my corners, then this is um, and tumble it. I like to tumble it. Now um, from here also, you could um, patina. Um, so then um, it really makes a nice uh, effect if you get like the nice dark shadows um, in your low points. Um, 
you polish the high points. Yes. Perfect example. Um, so this is kind of what you get here, especially is, is that effect. Um, um, let's just pause, 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 pause. Dude, that is super cool. That's like super cool. Oh, uh, yeah. It's uh, sometimes I, yeah, me and watching myself on video. I don't know. Sometimes I, you're yeah. cracking up there. You're watching yourself. You're like, you know, I saw you I was watching. Yeah, you yeah I know. Video. Like, oh, I'm like, I'm like critiquing myself as we're going. <laughs> I've gotten yeah, better. Gonna, that was actually I don't think my I first learned time. a video. Like, when I shoot video, I, I rarely look at it. Once it's out, it's out. I don't really look sure. at it. You just, sure. I'm on to the next video um yeah one of the things uh yeah yeah roma's like yeah that's beautiful one we had a couple questions that we can we can weave in so this we're at that final piece and then how many videos joanna do we have three more videos sure. Th three more so let's jump into some questions here and then we'll jump back into the videos um and we've got kind of a variety of questions here so certainly uh guys put in uh your the chat like questions okay they're coming in here I'm going to go from the top. Some of these are not directly. These are from last week. Uh, Anthony Mel, Mel Don, uh, Donna or something like that from YouTube. He was just asking, what RPM does your flat laps run? I, well, you guys were talking about the flat oh. laps last week. Yeah, we, we, yeah, I was tell, I, we were talking a little bit about it, but not in anything pertaining to the video, really. Yeah. I mean, they're variable speed. Like our flat laps are, are the rotary flat laps are variable speed. Um, I don't know the lowest speed on that, John. I mean, actually, uh, Rich uh, or actually Bart, Bart was who did the uh, glass thing. Is Bart on here? You can you can run them really slow. It, it definitely but, you but, can just turn the knob. I mean, if you get too slow, then the 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 tool stops working as effectively. There's right, a sweet right. spot. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yeah, but those are variable. Um, Gary was asking, can you talk about voltage and amperage used? I think we just nailed that. So you're less yeah. than less than a less than an amp, you know, right. going slow and low. Um, voltage really doesn't matter. I noticed like by default it was 18 volts. And then, you know, when you Yeah. I'm not and and there is like, you know, I guess there is there is that aspect of, and this is going back to science class, you know, mm -hmm. uh of, how much voltage then to, to equal the amperage because it's the current and, the, and yeah, whatever. Um, I don't, it's, it's, I don't really focus too much on that as long as I know with my, like I, like how I set, how I set it, that's the best way to do it. You just put your, you know, just cross your two, your two uh, leads together. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have to up the, the voltage a little bit to get the amperage where you need it, you just up the voltage a tad yeah. um, just so you get your amperage where you need it. And then I, you know, I don't really think about it that much. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that I mean, part, I like, I mean, I don't think like it. it. You could use a little, you could use a little wall work charger like you showed, like those little uh, yep. AC to DC converter. Although the nice thing yep. is you can dial this in. You know, yep. Yep. yeah, well, I, I thought that was really great uh, because for people that are, are wanting to experiment with it, but they don't want to necessarily spend the money for the rectifier yet. They can buy a little six volt, one amp, you know, DC power supply and be able to start etching without spending much money at all. Chances yes. they got one in their junk drawer. Like I yes, probably have that's five right. of those. That's where I was going to go with that too. Was like, yeah, you know, you have one of those old phone chargers, you know. Yep, there you, you go. Cut off, and you have some alligator clips, you know. Hook them on. You gotta. Yeah. As long as as long as it's got the uh, the right amperage, to, you know, as long as the the uh, you know all the details on it are are correct. That's all. Right. Right. That's yeah, all. It, it has to be like it has to be DC. Right. Yes. There are yes. some you AC are it. wall uh, wall things but it's got to be direct current DC. direct current correct right 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 uh matt was asking how much is the tuition fee at uh at the school so That'd like for your class for i know chris well i know christine can answer this easy so so the lab fee for myself for uh an electro etching class is 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 like a 150 dollar lab fee 
Um, yeah. And then that's the lab fee. But then I have, um, and I have, I have some uh, things that are included in the kit with the cost of the lab fee, uh, with the mm -hmm. cost of the class. But um, uh, then it's just the cost of materials. So, right. so yeah. And like a week there, a week. How much is a week down there? What do you, uh, the how tuition. much the school tuition? That would be a better question for Chris. Um, yeah, for, I don't know if Chris is on or not. I, I mean, I think her camera's off. But uh, uh, it's, uh, I think it's like because I know they have, you know, there's food costs, there's the lodging, and whatnot. But it's, it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's under five hundred dollars. I thought it was like four hundred ninety-five bucks. I thought it was like ridiculous. Yeah, I knew it was under five hundred, yeah. which is still, which is incredibly low compared to any other place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, super, super cool. Um, yeah, so Matt, I hope that answers your question. And then also Matt had a question. Matthew, can you please list the tools and material required? Um, do you have a list of that? I mean, that's certainly something we could add later. I have a source list. Um, I actually, because I, I know we got that question last week and I just haven't had time to actually get a whole list of like, because I don't, on my source list, typically I don't yeah, have the contact I mean, paper or whatnot, but I can I can get that together and send it to you. Um, yeah, just get it to Markar, and then that we can just add that to the 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 yeah. YouTube. And thing. it's also in the video sure. from last week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's excellent. Excellent. All right. And then Gary asked a question: Do you ever use a Buckner funnel for filtering? Uh, that's, uh, is that a, a more like one of those, like, you know, your, your, your more scientific, like glass filter things. I'm not no sure idea. what it is. Um, uh, and Gary, we, we, so I would say no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty, I am pretty, uh, low tech when it comes to that now, other than, and then I talked about it, you know, you can take the class. I have a, I have a hand pump vacuum filter that uh it looks yeah it, it came straight out of my 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 high school uh science class you know your glass beaker with the this uh ceramic filter thing that i'm like sitting there with the vacuum pump and that gets uh, once the solution has been uh saturated ever mm -hmm. multiple uses um the coffee filter only will go so far yeah this this then cleans it out I'm like it'll go in cloudy and it comes out perfectly it's blue nice. so it comes out perfectly blue so nice and, nice and i do have that on i can get that to you guys actually okay awesome and then joel uh ramirez was saying can you use electrical tape to cover your piece to etch in the solution um now the thing with electrical tape, if I'm thinking of like you, you would need something. The thing I like to use with contact paper, you have you can do varying widths of it. Um, you can uh, see through usually it. with, and the, the seeing through it is the biggest thing. Being able to see where you're putting things for myself is is the most important part there. So that's why I like the clear. Um, yeah. You can use. Uh, uh, so I also, when I'm doing uh, like say uh, a six millimeter uh, by two millimeter uh, uh, rectangle wire, really small stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You see, I've got Gorilla Repair Tape. I'll yep. use that um, to do those real small things because uh, the contact paper, it, it likes uh, a lot of surface area to create a nice tight contact uh, adhesion to it, to your piece. Um, and when you start getting real small, um, that really inhibits that quite a bit. So yeah. if I'm going real small, I like to use this stuff. Right. Okay. So no, cool, I tend cool. to stay away from that. I like it clear. Stay clear. Yeah. 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 You yep. want to see it. Um, Matthew is saying, how do you achieve the black color in the etched area? And that's actually something we also covered in uh, Erica's webinar, the silversmithing webinar. But why don't you just touch briefly on that? So, so that's like, you're talking about like the residue, I guess, right? Like, how does that yeah, yeah, stuff? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's, and that's, you know, I might need to do a little bit of an uh, investigation in like the, the actual, what is happening, the science behind these things and, and how the salts are, you know, interacting with the metal itself. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there is some stuff there that I, I really, I would, I would have to educate myself on too. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say it really doesn't 
make any difference. Um, that is just a process. That is just a, a, a reaction that's happening with just the, the way the salts and the metal are reacting to one another. Um, uh, it comes right off and yep. you get, you know, as soon as you, what's it called again? Talk, oh, Cause you, you had a term that you used on that. Um, uh, uh, with, uh, the, Oh, Oh, the resist. No, 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 no. I'm no, talking. No, no, no. I, the, the, I think you guys are, are, are cross, uh, cross talking. Uh, what, what Matthew was asking about is when you finish your piece, and you want to uh oh the patina patina yeah the, put the patina on it yes how do you do that um you can use multiple patinas um so one i like to use for silver yeah someone i see someone up there saying liver of sulfur that was i was i was going to get to that one liver mm -hmm. of sulfur is one that you can use i actually like to use that a lot if i'm doing like etching copper but i'm etching mm -hmm. silver i like to use the black max or mm -hmm. silver black um, which is a, it's a, it's very caustic solution. Um, it's actually, I've been finding it's hard to find currently, um, but uh, it gives a nice black, um, it's some sort of acid actually. And it, uh, it really gives a nice, it turns the silver real black. And then you can knock it back with like, um, I usually just use some uh, uh, pumice, a uh, pumice powder and I knock yeah. it back a little bit um, and then put it in a tumbler and then it, it burnishes it very beautifully. Yeah, no, that's, super, that's super cool. Like th those pieces yeah. you had there is like freaking badass. I like those. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Steve uh, had a question. <clears throat> What's the formula for etching straight copper or brass if I wanted to make a texture plate? Salt and water, what is the negative lead then? Stainless steel or another piece of copper? It's, it's, it's just a straight salt water solution. Pickling salt, um, citric acid, mm -hmm. and... Um, I, you know, good rule of thumb would be distilled water. Um, I don't always use distilled water, but pickling salt and citric acid and your water. Those are the three, those are the three ingredients. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing a gallon, it's three cups of pickling salt about, uh, you know, maybe, a, not even, uh, what I did about five teaspoons of citric acid, um, mm -hmm. with a gallon of water. Yeah. And then, um, but and specifically then, uh, pickling salt, pickling salt, yeah. not iodized. Right, um, right, 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 right. So, so is yeah, your real is simple? Your piece, is your piece still going to be on the anode? Yes. And I noticed that as I in the video, I said the cathode, but I never said the anode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and you can yes, still, your, and, and, your piece will and always. If and if you're etching copper, anode. you can still use a copper cathode. Correct. Yes. Awesome. That is correct. Yep. So it's basically the same setup as the example you did, except you're running a salt solution instead of the cupric nitrate. Correct. Yep. Exact same setup. Awesome. Yeah. And awesome. the only reason, and that doesn't, again, the only reason I do that, because um, you can etch, now silver won't etch in salt water. Um, silver won't. But, um, but cupric nitrate will etch any of them. Um, but I like to be able to reclaim my silver. So I just don't just, I just don't want to con contaminate it that way. Right. So, right, right. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, Matthew mm -hmm. had another question. And this was for you, John. He says, John, do you think that this will remain viable method in this area of CNC machines? It's kind of interesting because, you know, we're, we're yeah. etching versus machine etching. Um, well, basically what I would say is this. When you look at the detail that uh, Micah accomplished in this piece that he did, um, the machine time to produce that one little strip of metal, yeah. uh, because of the detail in it, you could be you could be running a forty minute, fifty minute cycle time on a CNC machine. So, you know, when you're talking, if you're running a CNC machine in the states. Uh, you're going to bill a couple hundred bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, CNC machine can't even come close to competing because the cost of operation is much higher. Well, um, I would so even the etching and the etching your, you know, you, if you wanted to produce a line of jewelry, the number <laughs> of pieces and the number of tanks you could set up for like pennies 
uh, is, is makes it really, really scalable and really, really inexpensive. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I think mean, there's, there's the that... whole, there's the whole thing of additive. There's the additive machining is a kind of whole nother thing. You think about printing yeah. a whole nother. Yeah. Are you guys doing printing there yet in the, in the school? No, teaching 3d yeah. 3d jewelry printing no no i i'm no i have not seen that class at all yeah. no yeah yep <laughs> it's a good idea so yeah. um <laughs> so um so well okay so that good so that answers that question so i thought that i was thinking about the runtime and how much mm. you know i mean it's although it's flat i mean it's there's still a lot of code in that you know in terms of the right. lines of code to actually do that and then so probably some tool changes in there as well um uh, 50,000 grit on YouTube says that's really cool. How deep can it go? And have you heard of electropating tumbling? Have, well, first he had the question, how deep can it go in terms of the etching? Second question was, have you heard of electroplating tumbling system? Um, that, that second one, the electroplating tumbling system, I'm not familiar with at all. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard anything on that either. Yeah. Um, the depths that you can go, I mean, you're going to be just dependent. It's going to be dependent on the thickness of your material. Mm -hmm. um, and then one thing you want to keep in mind. Um, so that's uh, the pattern that I used in that video. Um, it does have some fine lines in it. Um, you once you get below your resist, um, you gotta think that metal is all exposed, so you can eventually get undercutting happening. Yeah. Um, so, so it's possible if you have very fine lines, then you end up losing some of those really fine lines if you go too deep. Um, but, uh, if you have the thickness, I mean, you can go as deep as, I mean, as far as you can go as deep as you want, you know, if you had a, um, I do 10 gauge. Um, so this particular piece that I'm wearing right here. Um, you know, the depth there is probably every bit of it's, you know, maybe a half a millimeter deep, which is for an etch. That's really deep. That's, that's cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, his is so. his stuff friggin' cool or what? Like when I saw Micah's mm -hmm. work, I'm like, oh, we got to do a webinar. <laughs> because you can see that, <laughs> you, you know, and I was thinking about Richard there. I can see Richard on the video here. Like you yeah. start bringing these elements together. You really can innovate your art without throwing a ton of money at it. Like yeah. that's oh, yeah. the beauty you of you what you distinguish you're yourself. You can create your own look, your own feel. So when people see a piece, they go, oh, I know who made that. Yeah. Sure. And, and this I like is... Richard's video too. Oh yeah, no, Richard does some completely badass yeah. stuff. We'll be doing some other yeah. videos with Richard. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we got uh, a thing with uh, another question for Gary. Is there additional silver in suspension in the cubic nitrate that needs to be Particip precipitated out or is it all filtered out um typically i mean i i i, I it's all filtered out now it does you know you know it, it does participate participate precipitate um out um and actually in the salt water that's what the citric acid is doing um it mm. is allowing the metal to uh to do to do that um yeah. Um, no, mostly the time, like, that's why I filter it because once it gets, if it's, if there's too much in there, it's just going to create more resistance there and it's just going to slow down your etch. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, we had a question from Connie. Can you three, 3d printing silver? Is that a thing? Yeah. You could print that different metals. Platinum. You can print a lot of different metals. So it's a very interesting what? field to do i mean uh you know i i was just today we're working uh with heather i don't know if heather's on works for us so she does a lot of jewelry design and then uh stool uh stuller is doing the the creation of the pieces she'll, she'll do designs for customers and that now huh. i know that they've also been pushing into 3d technology there um i know rio's yeah. also got some 3d stuff that they're doing too i mean that is definitely a piece that we're seeing more of, and it's certainly a, a, an interest and passion that, that I have. Um, Steve actually just put something up here is that you can print, print 3D print silver three ways. You guys can read that in the chat. So 
Super cool, Steve. I like it. I like it though. That so he's got some good comment he just put in the chat there around okay. printing. Have you done that, Steve? You just put in the chat. Yes, or are you doing 3D printing? I'd love to find somebody to do a webinar on 3D printing on stuff. That would be cool for jewelry. So a lot of people have interest in that. Yep. Okay, Steve's doing it. So get Steve's contact information, team. Let's 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 talk. Um, okay. Tad, what other uh, Tad Messner asked the question? What other metals can you etch? Gold, for instance. Uh, well, I mean, I've never um, etched gold. I was under the impression that it is etchable. Um, but from my impression, um, and everything that I learned, um, I learned from a guy named John Fetfet. Um, and he, uh, uh, he always told me that you, there, most of the chemicals used to do that were pretty caustic. Um, yeah, scary acids because gold is very, very, very resistant. Uh-huh. So I've, I've never done gold, but, um, you know, any of the other metals, um, again, I've not done argentium. But I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. Um, I'm not just not real familiar with like the germanium and, and how it would yeah. re react or whatnot. So, yeah, um, but hey, you should be able videos? to do it. Yeah. Let's roll back into the videos. Yeah, because we got yeah, a few more videos. videos we, got left? we just went through the questions. So we're good on questions for the moment. So let's roll back into some videos there, Joe. Awesome. Awesome. Um, like I said, uh, from from what we've done, I can... Just cut myself uh, a disc, well, multiple discs. So, like I said, um, from here, you know, I'm just gonna create my last little piece here. You know, dome that. I like to use, um, in this, if, uh, if I'm doming, if I use a metal one, a metal uh, dapping set, I wanna put a piece of leather in here because it'll mar up my uh, my texture, my pattern. So um, in this, I'll just use a wooden one. And real simple. I like to do this over the supported part of my desk, anvil, or you know some other real support. There, nice domed little piece that will make my third little part for my pendant here. Uh, might have to clean up the edges sometimes. Um, Cause uh, you know, after the disc cutter, of course you can kind of, but this one actually feels good. Uh, but I've already got another piece here and I would take my uh, 1.8 punch, make myself a little, Um, sometimes you get a burr on the outside, but I want to clean that up. This one seems okay. Take a jump ring. And this is basically, you know, you know, cold connection or yourself a jump ring or a simple bale. You can make your own bale. Um, for this process, I just used a commercial bale. Um, but if I was doing this for myself, um, I might use, uh, I might make my own bale for it. Um, where was that piece? So I could, you know, take what I did here, use my bale pliers, form this soldering, add the jump ring, da 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 da, all that stuff then create my bale, my handmade bale for my, for my pendant. Um, there's that. And so like we see like with the, some of these finished pieces here, um, this is why I really like this piece, uh, this process. I can do all kinds of different things with this process. I can use different patterns. I can create my texture plates. Um, you notice this is a different pattern here. Um, I just did up a whole sheet. I can go through just like we did, cut out myself whatever size discs that I need. Um, this stuff so you can see. Um, 
you know, really the, the, the sky is the limit really when it comes to, I, uh, with this process and how you can use it. So, um, yeah, I guess that's kind of, uh, where we're at. That's where we're at with the process. Um, yeah, yeah, like I said, you can email me if you have any other questions. And uh, I guess for now, that's, uh, that's a wrap. Uh, if you've seen my YouTube video um, with my electro etching, I've basically etched the front of this 20 gauge uh, piece of sterling silver. And this is what I'm gonna use to then fabricate uh, my cuff is what I'm making here right now. I've got everything. Uh, I've green scrubbed. I made sure to clean off my metal nice and well so that we have uh, uh, our uh, solder will want to flow. It'll also give the uh, solder some tooth to then uh, to hold on to the metal. So uh, first off what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to get my torch going and then I am going to use some Prips Flux um, which is a high heat flux and uh, it helps uh, prevent fire scale. Um, also, I'm using a number five torch tip. So this is gonna be a big flame. So I'll have to have a decent amount of heat control here. Uh, now it's not hot, so I'm using my hands for the moment until it gets trips. All right, so now I'm Put this over. I like to have everything kind of where I where I have it, where I can easily grab it, kind of like a, kind of like a dentist. I like to set this up on my. Set this up now. Sometimes I'll have my torch going as I do this, but I uh, thought for video's sake so we can see what's happening here and for time purposes. I like to have my pieces extended out. I'll, always, uh, I'll just come back and clean this up afterwards. Gives me room for air. here I'm gonna use a uh, a uh, what's called a stick or probe solder mm -hmm. which I've already got them set up here All right. so now I'm set I'm gonna go across one more time with a little bit of prips that kind of helps glue things in place and then I will be ready to solder this down you solder up a uh, almost two ounce pieces of uh, silver uh, cup um, I'll have to let that cool down and um, nice little trick I like to use here uh, for it to release from my brick um, a lot of times I know people are used to having pieces of their brick come up off their onto their metal you get some steam action going on there should uh, still stuck a little bit it'll just uh, pop right off there we go yep come off clean there we go pickle that and I'll have cleanup to do so that's the that's the solder that's cool that's cool um you're muted you're muted. You're muted. Unmute yourself, Micah. 
Thank you. Uh, no, yeah, that's yeah. the fun part for me. I like the fire part. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's I mean, a big well, torch. That's when it starts coming together as a piece. Like you're really putting yeah. the pieces together. What I love is you're building a library of textures and shapes and things like that. Then, then you can assemble. This kind of reminds me again back to Richard building his library of slabs and shapes and things like that. Oh, that yeah. you can then put together. And your flow yep. of creativity then is like, oh, I got this, I got that. You can pull stuff. Which yeah. uh, do you tend that to work that way? Like you batch out some kind of ideas, and then you've got a library to work with. Totally. I uh, yeah, I I will etch up like a number of different like sheets, um, and then from those sheets, then um, yeah, I'll pick and choose like you know, I tend to, um, I, I you know, I try to have some consistency or you know i like to have a cohesiveness to my design so i'll use you know um, i try not to use too many drastic patterns together but yeah. um, i'll have like you know that little swirl pattern that i do um yeah. i'll do that and then i'll do another one that is similar but i won't use the the the, the fat uh, the, the 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 large line weight one i'll yeah. just do a a real thin line and i'll do the same pattern so it, so that's a similar similar pattern but it and it works together but it's not like it doesn't clash yeah that's kind no. of yeah no totally totally makes sense we got a couple other questions here ed had a question michael mm -hmm. micah do you anneal the silver prior to etching or do you punch and and dap without annealing um so prior to etching i don't anneal um and then most of the time i get you know the the process of etching really doesn't do a lot of work hardening. I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of manipulation to the metal itself to cause the, the metal to start work hardening. So I tend to not, I get my, I usually purchase my silver already dead soft. So mm -hmm. it's usually ready to go. Like as soon as I pull it out, you know, clean it up, I'm ready to either start punching my discs um, or where, you know, cutting it, whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing. So I, I typically don't do that beforehand. And then when I start getting into the thick gauges, like the cuffs, um, uh, I might do, I might do a little bit of annealing. I typically don't need to. Um, some of that is maybe I'm, 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 I'm a well aware enough of my process. So I don't have to do a lot of too much manipulation. Um, I'm not having to go back and bend, rebend or whatnot to, to have to worry about the work hardening. But um, um, I have had students, I've had, I've, I've had work that I've had to do that, with, like student work where I've had to do that. But that's just because of the, the manipulation that, you know, that, you know, they, they, they do more manipulation than that, that might be than necessary. <laughs> I mean, so. you know, the other things like I keep saying, like thinking about your class there, are you going to be doing another class there um, before the end of the season? Yes, I will be back down here the uh, was the week of the twenty first, and that last. It, so it's the that last second to last the last week of October. Ten twenty three in um, ten thirty. Correct. Yep. Yep. Thank yep. you. Thank you, Chris. Hey, pull up Chris. By the <laughs> way, that's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull Chris up on the. I'm gonna pull her up on the main screen here. We got and, a couple more questions. Um, I know. Um, I will say this. Uh, I do have availability open my class my class next week. So, uh, so I have openings if anyone uh, is interested uh, next week too. Um, well, and, and that and will be. This that is will a ridiculous be value. Yeah. Um, so. a couple other questions. Connie had three questions here, so I'm gonna put them together. One, okay. she's like, "Can I buy some f finished sheets? Do you sell yeah, finished?" I, I saw that. Yeah. Um, I haven't done that. Um, and yes, I need to. Chris is already. Yeah, I see Chris smiling right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I actually do. There is someone, uh, a, a, a student here, who was interested in buying one of uh, the texture mm -hmm. plate that I have. I have some texture plates that I need to get made for Chris. Um, yeah. But um, I haven't. Um, but uh, at this point, I, I totally would. Um, I could easily, um, um, yeah, I guess I, I just need to set that up myself. That, that's, that's part of, you know, just having, yeah. uh, you know, setting that up and then selling them, uh, promoting them on, uh, you know, uh, you know in Facebook or 
or yeah. or or, or uh, uh, Instagram even. I need. We to know be a few organized. things how to do that. I bet you we could sell some of those too. Um, yeah. Uh, no, we'll. Uh, to our 34, yeah, um, have our 34, 36,000 customers, whatever we deal with, we got a lot of customers. You know, I, um, I will definitely, I will definitely talk to you on that. Yeah. Um, Connie yeah. also had a question. Can you use the brick again immediately after adding water? Cause you use the water to take that piece off. Um, yeah. I mean, usually it's hot enough that that water is evaporating mm. pretty, um, that, that water is evaporating real quick. So yes. Um, and then, um, when I'm setting those things up, you know, doing the pripsing and all that, I'm adding that heat. So if I was to be doing another piece right mm -hmm. after that one, all the, all the, the torch work that I'm going to be doing would be evaporating that previous water that was on there. It's just going to evaporate away. Yeah. So, and, and she had yeah. a separate question. It's like, what metal do you use for ear wires? This is kind of, I just use sterling. Um, I just, I'm, I, most of my ear wires I've, as of lately, I've been purchasing the ear wires because mm -hmm. I've been trying to focus more in fabrication of the other stuff. Yeah. So, um, I do tend to, um, you know, I have, I have been told by, uh, 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 and, uh, and it's another instructor that was here at one point. She's, she's no longer at Kim St. Jean. I don't know. Um, but she would always get on me. She was like, you need to be making your own bales. <laughs> and I do make my own bales. I do, yeah. I do make a lot of, you know, there are a number of my pieces where I do, but, um, when it comes to some of this, those little small things, I guess I, I tend to focus more, you know, I, get I tend it. to focus yeah. more in. Yeah. No, so. totally. Totally. Um, Matt was asking a question. This is actually a little off topic. He's like, when are we going to do a sphere making webinar? John, well, I'm going to get a core <laughs> drill, right? Don't I have a core drill coming into the warehouse? Uh, you got a bunch of core drills coming there. But I'm going to have one that I can keep. They're not going to just run out the door. Well, they may just run out the door. I mean, but uh, <laughs> like, the biggest problem that we have, guys, is I, I I can't keep equipment. Like the equipment comes, it goes so fast because you all buy it that I'm like the cobbler's child with no shoes. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's I'm I'm because that priority is always to the customer, and literally we're shipping you know thousands of machines, but it's it's hard to actually be able to retain stuff in stock because we're going to always prioritize you to get a machine well, before and, we stick. And you know, I'm sure, man, what we may think about doing is we may think about talking to some of the people who are currently running our gear, and and because yeah. it's great to showcase their stuff too. Because oh, uh, no question. You know, they got some great setups like Bruce and, and Andres and yep. well, now Lori too. So yep, yeah, Lori, a lot absolutely. Of cutting, yeah. So. Yep. No, I absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Hey, look, put up the, put up the William Holland school of lapidary uh, page that has the QR code and that um, up on here, Joe. Um, you certainly I strongly encourage uh, each of you to, check out the school. The school does amazing work. I'm going to try to get myself down there in September. Um, and uh, so I've just got to coordinate that um, because I'm, I think you could be there all year. You guys have so many courses, like how many different courses you could do like probably like four, three months of solid classes, right, Chris? Yeah, we do um, 20 different, we can do up to 20 classes a week, different yep. classes. That's how many classrooms we have. And we run 32 weeks out of the year. No, yeah, yeah. so so you know, there's so much to do so so definitely like look at what the school has to offer i mean you're getting a flavor of what mike has done you guys have seen bill's work uh i know mm -hmm. we got some other people coming up too like it, this is really a a a gem of a resource and it's ridiculously reasonably priced uh, and and we have you have a lot of customers that come from you know the attendees that come from california because all everybody there is volunteering. Like Mike is volunteering. Like the they come there because the love to do that. I mean, Mike is not going and getting paid yeah. to go do that. He's there because he loves to teach and wants to really share that skill. And I think that's something that really makes the the school itself accessible because you know, basically have people that are truly committed to being there. I know John would love yeah. to teach spear making if he was ever being able to get back into the States any reasonable time because he's a master at that. Although, you know, we have other customers that are doing you know, Bev Darby, other people that are doing terrific sphere cutting. Um, that may be people like oh, teach. Are you saying sphere? Sphere. Balls. Sphere. Balls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I thought you said Spears at first. I was like, whoa. <laughs> oh no, that would be that would be Chris Strickland. He can teach you how to do Spears, like because he does the flint napping. You know, there's like and yeah, Roy Miller. Not, I mean, there's some not, killer guys doing that. <laughs> so um That's you know and, and like if you guys have enjoyed this put some love in the chat for micah like you know say thank you i mean because this is like you know we're taking out the time to teach people so certainly uh you know um you know this is really good stuff and certainly if you like the webinars please give us a five-star review give us a google review saying hey man this is great stuff um, that motivates us. It's great. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. These videos all go up on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can, uh, that's the link or you can scan to do the, uh, the, the, the Google review, which we totally, totally love those because that motivates us. Um, and then, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel and tell your friends about that. I mean, part of what we're really committed to do here at Highland Park is to provide the means to inspire people to pursue and engage in the lapidary arts, whether that's making, whether that's buying, whether that's appreciation, um, whether people are doing it just for fun or whether you're doing it commercially. We really are, are aiming these webinars to really engage and help people succeed. And I know many of you have been asking about marketing. We will be doing more marketing webinars. I just got to get it on the, on the schedule here. Um, but uh, certainly subscribe, certainly show up, and certainly check out the William Holland School of the Lapidary Arts. They have such terrific programs. Did I quote the prices right? It's four ninety five for a week, Chris. Yes, yes. Okay, that's your yep. uh, lodging, your food, tuition. Yeah. That's like such a great deal. And then, of course, there's lab fees, depending on what you're doing. There may be like you said, yours is like a hundred and some dollars, Micah, for yours. Uh, yeah, a hundred and fifty dollar lab fee. Yeah. yeah. So that's so. really um, you know, that and then uh materials, you know, selling the materials and stuff is where I tend yeah. to well, yeah, and, and that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that's kind of how yeah. a lot of people do is they'll sell the kits and that. Um so yeah. and do you do you make any of those kits available that you sell like for people? Like obviously they can buy stuff there. Um, you know, I haven't made them available outside of class, but uh mm -hmm. But uh, yes, that's actually something I, I uh, maybe uh, I'll, uh, I'll maybe need to talk to you guys and yeah. Chris and someone to maybe get a little bit of guidance in um, in some of those areas because that's I, honestly um, some of like what you were talking about when we were talking earlier before the web webinar. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah, there's there's some aspects there of the promotion and the and the promoting yep. of myself and some of those yep. areas that uh, I I could I could benefit with uh, some some uh, a little assistance there. Um, Absolutely, I'm not no, always, we're happy I'm to not help. Not always with. looking that direction. I, I mean, I'm yep. not always thinking there. I, I'm like kind of, you know. Yeah, I'm that artist. Just like think, you know, I'm just yeah, thinking. Don't be about like Van Gogh, who did amazing work and nobody knew until after. And it not, yes, that was ridiculous. When we were over there at the Van Gogh Museum, I mean, this guy was a genius, and like nobody knew. Mm -hmm. You know, right, because right. until the, until the thing dead. I say is the best known always beats the best. You know, and if sure. you can make yourself known and visible, people can discover you. That's such sure. a key sure. key piece. And we'll talk more of that on on the on the stuff. So. Uh, um uh we're doing marketing essentials next week lizelle oh okay good i guess we're doing marketing next week and we got plenty of content so um so that's great so that, that might that be good for me to watch I, absolutely join yeah because yeah, we go we'll be going deep into a lot of the marketing stuff i mean that's something that we've learned a lot we've got some terrific mentors and we're happy to share that knowledge to the community really help people take what they are doing and get it out in a bigger way. Cause that just tends to be everybody's concern is like, how do I get people to know what I'm doing? Cause you know, you're doing cool stuff. So, uh, Hey, can yeah, people just you. put up, put Micah's uh, links up on the web and do we have a page for Micah's if people want to do the QR codes, put, put that up. I know I'm like running Joanna. She's like pulling everything together there. Cause you can follow yeah, him right. on Facebook and also on Instagram um here we go yep so functional art designs the website the facebook's there do you have an instagram as well i i do i have i need to be better about uh, i need to be better about posting on it um and and uh 
I don't know what the the handle of it is. Um, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll you know, that's something. Maybe we can put that when we get the YouTube channel. The YouTube's up. Make sure, uh, Mark, that we get that in there too. Um, and uh, and I'm sure you enjoy that Starbucks and that Richmond, Indiana Starbucks. I know that one. <laughs> yeah, I do. I know it quite well. So um, yes, yes. It was actually pretty good Starbucks of my tour of Starbucks across the country. That was actually one of the better ones. So, um, Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, I, I went to Starbucks in every single state. Uh, well, every state across yeah. coming whatever the freeway is. So yeah. a lot of Starbucks. How recently? All right. Yeah. That's my next stop. Yeah, you're going to Richard? Starbucks. Yeah, John's in the morning. She's like, I need this Starbucks. So, yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you. Thank you again for coming on, Micah. And Chris, thank you. Thank you, thank you Christine. For thank you for, for making this happen. You know. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having yeah, us. Awesome job. I, I appreciate awesome it. Job, dude. All right. Great to see all of you. And we'll see you next week for Marketing Essentials, the second part. All right. Take care.